So Michael Clayton. Now, this is the guy that wrote Jurassic Park, right? What? No, that, no, that's no. Michael Crichton. Oh, okay, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All no, white people look alike. Michael I Clayton was the the Lone Ranger. What? Who? who is, I don't even know that reference. Who are you talking about? Wow, you are so old. It's just <laughs> amazing. Are you going to be all right? Do you need your medicine, Grandpa? <laughs> Jesus, I would be fine. <laughs> well, this is a legal drama film noir. And really, I know you got to give me a second, but it really is. Michael Clayton is a fixer. He's the guy for a big company who would rather just be a regular lawyer, but he's so good at what he does, which is he steps in when everybody else completely F's things up and he fixes it. Okay. He's, he's kind of down and out. He's kind of frumpy in some ways. Frumpy. He's like, frumpy. He's connected though. You know, he's got his brother, the cop. He's got his inside people. Yeah. He can, he can make things happen, but he is one of those guys. He's tough. Without having to rough people up, you know, well, he's a negotiator, you know, he, he makes things right. And that's, you know, this fool, man, I feel sorry for him because they won't let him move up because he does that too well. Yep. That's what they say. You got to be careful if you're really good at something because, you know, you do it too well. They might say, yeah, I, we'd love to give you a promotion, but nobody else wants to do your job. No, <laughs> it's funny because they keep telling us that here. Yeah. And that's why we can't make any more money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else is like the company here? You know, there's this big company in this movie. <laughs> no, it's really you, evil. <laughs> you know, it, you're really good sitting down talking, Leon. And that's all you need to do. <laughs> right. I mean, come on. You, you, you like that, don't you? You too, Cyrus. What? Sit down and talking? Yeah, just flap your jaws. I'm not sure I can do anything else at this point. <laughs> <laughs> My legs don't actually function on their own really. <laughs> that's true we, we have nothing b below the table yeah i didn't know that we're puppets <laughs> but the the thing is is that okay you said this is like legal film war i kind of watch i, I kind of saw this as a as a little more serious somber aaron brockovich see i don't see that even i saw more of a comedic aspect to aaron brockovich what if we put ways. a wig on george clooney and would you see him as aaron brockovich <laughs> you just want to excuse to put a wig on george clooney i know where you're coming from with your man crush okay and that's okay Oh, I'm the same it. way with Johnny Depp. You know what the but... man crushes. <laughs> Crush you, go on. <laughs> no, no, the only reason you're saying Aaron Brockovich, because it's another movie that's just named after the main character. Exactly. Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> you could have said this Michael is, Clayton. This is just like Simon Birch, except George Clooney isn't like a little crippled kid. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for a movie called Clarence William the Third, <laughs> about an angry black man with a big afro. I want to see Aaron Brockovich versus Michael Clayton. <laughs> but no, man, you know, I. No, so this What's, movie, you know, he, it, it, uh, as you said, George Clooney's Michael Clayton. He's the guy at the legal firms. They call in. He works for this firm, and they call him in to just smooth things over. If, if he can't do it for you, then he knows somebody who can do it. Yeah. He's like that guy who sells radios on the street, you know. So, <laughs> hey, Slick, I can't get this for you, but I know somebody who can, you know. Right. My name is Linda, and if I ain't got it, there ain't in there. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, buddy, no. did you just kill that hooker? Well, I'll tell you what. I know somebody who could help you out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, we got a hooker that looks just like her. We put it back on the corner. No, but we uh, – in this movie, he they have a huge client. What are they called? You you soft or you you firm or what? You grow you north. What the hell are they called? You 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 glow or something. Anyway, it's a big company. They are uh they're corporate and they they like they they do what insecticides or right, fertilizer right. and they try to come off as being earth friendly, but they are killing people. Well, like I'm sure lots of companies actually are. Yeah, but exactly. they're this huge. They say at one point they're in sixty countries. Sixty countries. Like McDonald's is like. Wow, really? <laughs> you I know, know that's like, a lot. Like the Umbrella Corporation from Resident Evil. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> now that would have been cool. I would have liked to have seen that. I knew y'all would have some <laughs> trap door which you would geek out on with these goddamn video games. Can we stay on the subject of the law and corporate espionage, please? Michael Clayton walking down the corridor, blowing away zombies with a shotgun. <laughs> Subpoena this. And, and the sad thing is, when you watch this movie, that's what you actually saw. Yeah, I'm watching a movie about adults, and in y'all's minds, they blowing away zombies no that, well, that's what flying I said. helicopters i said well this is michael see i said this is michael Crichton, and <laughs> where, where the dinosaurs and this, what they working for the umbrella corporation where the zombies i want some zombies and dinosaurs but which not is, which is funny because yeah. it feels like he's such a tough guy the movie keeps wanting you to feel like clooney is gonna go total tough guy and he doesn't he's not that kind of guy he's just a lawyer you know he's a really good lawyer but even the soundtrack is like dun 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 it's like do it do it grab that guy beat him up yeah beat like, him up it's like when, when george clooney's about to just open the door to a urinal stall. It's playing 
the theme from the Terminator. Dun, 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 dun. George, you can see George Clooney like the camera, like, man, I'm just taking a shit, all right? Yeah, I, <laughs> guarantee, I guarantee you, when George Clooney pulls his cock out in any given situation, the Terminator theme does play. Okay. Cyrus, can we have one conversation where you don't start talking about George Clooney's cock? Where, where you don't start talking about George Clooney's cock? Uh, Jesus. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just reading the notes Corey gave to me. <laughs> oh, okay. Then, no, okay, let's move on now. Now, the thing is, is that they have this giant corporation. And they work for them, and George Clooney has cleaned up some stuff for them, so he knows a lot. Now, uh, Tom Wilkinson plays a lawyer who's been also working for these guys and getting them off the hook on a lot of things, and he's just had enough. He knows too much. He knows the people that they've destroyed, and his mind just turns on him, and he goes crazy. He just strips down naked in, in one session. And so from that point on, that's where this company starts to get unraveled. George Clooney st- starts to learn about a few things, and then he has to decide – you know, is he going to keep covering for these people or is he going to do something about it? A- a- at least until things take a really wrong turn. Yeah. And Tom Wilkinson is so good in this. It's it's a shame he's not in the movie more. I mean, this is yeah. really I mean, this is Clooney's movie. It's you can see why he agreed to do it because mm-hmm. the camera just follows him around no matter what he's doing. But Wilkinson, wow. I mean, the dialogue they give him is really great, but he just elevates it to something. You're just sitting there going, man, I could watch this guy. This is like the white Morgan Freeman. He could read in the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. He's always a phenomenal actor. I mean, you know, you hear him with his, with his British accent, but then he pops up in Batman Begins, and he's talking like a, a, a New York mobster. But in this movie... Damn, Leah, I knew you were going to tie this to some comic book connection. Can we stay on the point of legal issues here? <laughs> you see you know how what? he brought that full circle? I didn't no, bring no, it full no, circle. No, I flipped no, it back I, on you. You know, you know what? I was going to say something. I mean, normally, I would have a retort, but, but Carlisle did point out to me that I bring up Batman in every one of these reviews that is true you actually do <laughs> yeah, but uh, somehow. <laughs> somehow i gotta take it back to bruce wayne but uh have i mentioned scarlett johansson's rack yet <laughs> no darn. but uh tom wilkinson he pretty much steals this movie away from from george clooney up until the point when he's not in it anymore yeah i mean it's almost like george clooney like came in and like made sure like look we need to remove this character from the story because <laughs> this is not working for me. You, whose name is at the top of this list? You see that? George Clooney. Does it say Tom Wilkinson? No, I don't believe it does. It says George Effin Clooney. Okay? But you know, the thing is, is that I think it's understood that at, at, uh, Tom Wilkinson, it, he is a larger than life character in this movie. Oh, yeah. And He's everybody crazy. has their place. Uh, and uh, yeah, Tilda Swinton, who plays uh, sort of this uh, sleazy female executive. She's what Michael, Michael Clayton does, sort of. She's exactly. the same thing. She's a fixer, but for the evil corporation. Yeah, she's a promotions person. You know, she's, a, she's like PNR, but she's evil PNR. And she's not real good at it either, because she walks around just sweating her ass off the whole time. <laughs> yeah, if something goes wrong, you do not want to have this bitch on your team, because the moment, some, the moment somebody drops the ball, her armpits get all wet. She's her eyes got, bug out like a chihuahua. <laughs> she's got... She's got like, like a waterfall coming off our nose. I'm like, and everybody's looking at her and we're like, damn, bitch, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> nothing, so, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. She's so bad at it, too. It's like, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. What? Why? Does something seem like it's wrong? No, I'm fine. Go ahead, do it. She's such a bad liar. People were like, uh, are you okay, Tilda? No, I'm fine. Why do you ask? No, everything's fine. Seriously, I'm okay. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, even to the point when she's like trying to give her assassin's orders, they don't, they like, so are, are you saying yes? You want us to do this? Or. Well, um, what options? I mean, okay. It's like o- watching Okay, John- yes or no. It's like watching John Kerry order a hit. <laughs> just, just waffling back and forth. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, he's, he's in, uh, I mean, who else is in this movie that's really, oh, uh, Sidney Pollack. Oh, yeah, that? I love Sidney, Sidney who, Pollack. Yeah, he's always great. Who's one of the producers in this, who's uh, pretty much George Clooney's boss. He's over the firm that he works for. There's a lot of good performances in this movie. I think where the movie, and it's, it's funny because these performances are really great, and there are spots of really great dialogue and they, they make these really good scenes i mean you just you're either laughing because it's so clever or you're cheering and i mean but the movie the pace in this movie just crazy off yeah yeah it needs to be tightened up a lot it's funny saying like the pacing when you when you say uh, the movies i'm sorry okay when you say the pacing's off in a movie what it basically means is there's times when it gets boring but you still like it well yeah no that's, but really i do mean like there's these these moments in this movie where all these good scenes could have been connected a little bit better if they had just cut some stuff off. Yeah. You know, I mean, cut some stuff out. I mean, damn. I mean, I'm just talking about simple things that should have been obvious, like George Clooney driving. Yeah. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? They're going for an atmospheric thing here. I mean, they really are. It's like part of why is making the film noir connect- connection to this. I mean, there's many reasons. But one of them is that that they're all into the lighting and the look of the thing and the moodiness of the piece. And that's I think that's really what they were going for here. But 
I think just the part of the problem is the sheer amount of information they're throwing at you. It's kind of this, it's almost like Syriana level. Like that was kind of like this hugely complex drama about yeah, no, global no. politics. And this is the same way about no, wait, like, wait, legal wait. situations. Don't, don't throw Syriana in this. You're going to scare people away from it because well, it's not that. But I think a lot of the people who didn't like Syriana aren't going to like this either for the same reasons because it's really complex. No, you got, no, the thing is you have a point. I mean, it, it's a complex story enough as it is without them turning the time around and, and uh, doing all this uh, the, the switching scenes around and having to reassemble them later. It's, I don't think they needed to do that, really. I think that just makes it just a little bit more confusing. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like the movie. I even fell asleep in one part and woke up and I didn't think... I, oh, see, I, I thought I it was just anything. me. <laughs> no, no. It's, I mean, it's long, man. It okay. is It is long. But it. Uh, I'll say this. It does pay off at I mean, the hold end. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I was ne- I couldn't help it. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Go ahead. I, I will say this. It does pay off. I have really felt it paid off because there's a point in the food movie you go, this is good. Everybody's good in it. It's written well. It's just taken effing forever to get to where it's going, and it better make me happy at the end. And sure enough, it made me happy at the end. No, I, it, I thought it was worth it. If you, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You really have to sit through a lot, but you get a good payoff. I don't know if it's worth as much as we had to sit through, but it's still a really good movie. I mean, I... I I'm still trying to decide if it's one of the best movies I've seen this year. I mean, it's definitely one of the better ones. Yeah. As just far as as far as how it's made, so I'd still be willing to give it full price. Yeah, I, I think that there's actually a lot here that I didn't even catch the first time through. There's a whole underlying metaphor that has something to do with horses and this red book that his kid reads that is not entirely clear to me what the hell was going on, but it keeps popping up at every turn. And it, it has sort of the zen-like thing going, and I hate to be made to feel stupid, so I guess I'm going to have to see it again and just say full price. Yeah. Well, see, that, that's what's cool. It's like one of these movies that, that makes you want to see it a second time just to get get that figured out. But do you want to go to the theater and say, do you just want to wait for cable to see it again? You know what? Actually, by the end, there was enough going on that I actually wouldn't mind going to the theater to see it again. But like, much so you like fall you. fall asleep again? I mean, I'm like you guys. Yeah, hey, I, I was falling asleep in the beginning. It, it, had, it had a slow takeoff, but I did feel like the closer it got toward the end, the better it got. Yeah. And it had a set... I mean, the payoff to me was worth it. It was really satisfying. And, um, yeah, I, I, one of the things I would like warn people about, like, it is a movie you have to pay attention to, and you might not get it. It's not for everybody in that, because this movie doesn't spoon feed you anything. You really got to work at it. You know, it, yeah. it, it thinks more of you than you might think of yourself. Like, w- there's a character who gets very obviously killed. I mean, in every, th- there's no doubt that this character has well, been. Well, we still can't say that, because you don't know. I mean, people still want. I mean, they were still giving some away. I'm gonna have to cut that out. Really saying that, that a character gets killed? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it does lead into it with everything else we've said so far about. Uh, yeah, Jim Broadbent. Oh, I'll assume okay. it was him. Probably. Did you say Jim Broadbent? Did I say, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, we could say that Jim Broadbent yeah, gets Jim killed. Broadbent gets killed. He's so killed he doesn't even show up. <laughs> he doesn't even appear in the movie. <laughs> they kill him before you even enter the theater. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Well, then let me just say that some people walked out confused about some things that happened that were even obvious yeah that seemed pretty obvious but the thing is it doesn't talk down to anyone it doesn't talk down to lawyers who are familiar with legal codes and the lawyers be talking (laughs) like what the hell they talking about i know (laughs) no it's it's in other words if you stupid don't go see this yeah pretty much that's that's my point but i i I would give it full price Uh, and you're right about the metaphors here or what i mean because this george clooney gets out of the car he stops the car to look at these horses it's almost like he looked at these horses like god damn it you did it. Yeah, These I, horses guilty. I just was so tempted just to MST3K that whole sequence right there. It's like, hey, have you seen Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, yeah, like, or whatever. Okay, George, I guess you're wondering why we called you here. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it makes me wish kind of that Michael Crichton had been involved. Like, it could have used some dinosaurs in the middle. <laughs> right, the horse's head splits open and it's like <laughs> Carpenter's the thing. And then he's like a zombie. Yeah, you know, could have used some zombies walking around. I mean, What as a, can yeah, exactly. I, quit looking at me like that. You guys are morons. Even most zombie movies are improved by more zombies. Okay, I'm going to break it up to your level then. You know Batman should have came in and saved the day. Nah, Actually, Batman right. would have been perfect. See, and, look, and George Clooney did play Batman ooh, at one point. But see, not look in at the, you. Not the Batman we want to see coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The one of the worst. Don't you ever talk about me in video games again. 